So, I've stolen a lot in my lifetime. The once a thief, always a thief. That's a lie. The once an addict, always an addict. That's a lie. The once a um, alcoholic, always an alcoholic. That's a lie. These things are a lie. These things are put in our minds to make us doubt that Jesus Christ can be the Savior and Deliverer of all things. He is the knower of all hearts. That's why Yahushua Jesus, God Almighty, is the knower of all hearts. Because He knows our hearts. I stole from the time I was six years old until the time I was, until seven years ago. 34, 33, 32, 31, 30, 29, 28, 27. Until I was 27 years old, I stole stuff. I, when Opie met me, I was carrying around little bottles in my bag, my backpack, or my purse, to put other people's shampoo when I go to the bathroom and stuff. Their shampoo and conditioner, or I'd get their bars of soap, razors, I'd steal undies, and, and um, I, I'd go in stores and I'd wear old shoes in, and I'd switch the shoes out. I'd wear clothes big enough to where I could put other clothes on underneath it. I was switching stuff out, okay? I'd switch the tags on things in, in stores, you know, so that would, I'd get them cheaper. I would switch stuff, so. I stole for many, many, many years. I burned a lot of bridges because of stealing. Um, I don't have enough time this morning, but I would really like to, to do my testimony one day. Um, you know, but this one right here is very important, the thieving. Because um, if you've got someone in your life that gives you a chance, then just one person that gives a thief a chance one person, that person that they will always remember and know if that person is a person that truly does not want to do these things, that truly does not want to steal, does not want to lie, does not want to do drugs, does not want to drink, but you got to have somebody in your life that's going to give you a chance, that's going to, don't, don't like the things around you. You know, don't don't and don't like this stuff so much that you care if someone takes it from you or not. I um I have many stories on on stealing, but I remember one time I lied to a friend. We pulled up at a, a house in uh in in a little town that I used to live in that I grew up in where I learned to steal, and uh, my mom my mom taught me how. And I, um, we pulled up, I was probably, I had children already. The one thing that I did not do right as a mother is I stole while I was still a mama. I was stealing stuff, people's things. And, and I stole a lot. A lot of it I did to take care of my children, but a lot of it I did that I shouldn't have even been stealing stuff, you know. But anyway, we pull up at this woman's house. It was an old house that I used to live in, and I lied to my friend. I walked up on their porch. It was night time. Now, we, we were in an African-American neighborhood. And I, and that does matter. I'm going to tell you why. Uh, because um, uh, two white girls in my African-American neighborhood, um, there was some paintings that were sitting on the front porch. And I went, I grabbed them paintings. And I went and ran to the car. And, and uh, Nana was driving. And I put them in the back seat. And I said, let's go. And she said, what are these? And I said, these were my memos. Now, mind you, we ain't lived in this house in, in, in teens of years, okay? And I said, uh, these were my memos. They must have found them in the attic. They were sitting on their porch. They had a sign for free on them. I just grabbed them. I knew that they were memos, so they won't have a problem with it. Before I knew it, here come this big one, boy. She was mad. She grabs a hold of that doorknob where I'm on the side of the car that I'm on. I mean, she come running quicker than we could even get, you know, where we were talking about this and realized that this woman's coming toward this car. She opens that door. She pulls me out of that vehicle. Let me tell you, <laughs> I've got some friends. There's some African Americans. And their temper and their strength they get, when they get mad, we doggy. It is stout. This woman grabbed me like a man. She pulls me out of this vehicle, puts me up against that vehicle, puts her head in my face, and says, did you steal my stuff? And I was like, 
Oh, I, I thought it was for free. I'm sorry. No, you didn't think it was for free. You don't go up on somebody's porch and think it's for free. She said, is that my stuff in the back of your seat? And I said, yeah. And she said, you lucky I don't beat your butt right here. Or no, no, uh No, she didn't. She didn't say luck. She said, you're blessed I don't beat your butt right here. See, she was one of, the reason I remember her so well is because this woman was one of the ones that helped me to remember that Jesus Christ is real. Help me to remember in my heritage. Help me to remember in Jesus. So she said, you are blessed that you, that you do not get the cops called on you. I don't whoop your tail right here. Or I don't whoop your tail right here. She had called the law. The law pulls up. The law knows my mama. I'm in my old town. My mama still lives in this town. And they're very upset. They tell me, you, your mama is it, da, 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 and you will never be allowed in this town again. Get out. So I did. Well, um, years go by. Um, I didn't see my mom, didn't go see her or nothing like that. You know, um, she was the one I learned a lot of my stuff from. I ended up in uh, having two children, two more children besides Toby, by the same man, um, the, the last two children. The first one was by a different man, and he didn't want to have nothing to do with his son. Um, but Matt had these two children with me, plus he ended up taking care of Toby as a dad. and. He wasn't too fond of the stealing and stuff. Now, he liked it if I come home with stuff that I switched tags on and whatnot or a new t-shirt or whatnot, but he didn't like it, but he'd take it. Or he'd take the money that I ended up stealing from somewhere. He didn't like it, but he'd take it. So, he went to jail for smoking pot on the buffalo. This was uh, after Caning was born, our second child. Um, and he did his time in there. While he was in jail, I stole $38,000 worth of somebody else's checks. And I got him out of jail with that. So he only did like almost a little, maybe two months, maybe. But while he was in there, mind you, I bought everything for our children, got us a home set up, got our vehicle taken care of, everything was taken care of. And then he come home, um... We did our little family thing. I, I was pregnant, so I couldn't go do my jail time for smoking pot on the buffalo. It was my first drug charge ever having. Mind you, I know a lot of drugs. Methamphetamine, cocaine. I've been doing drugs since I was real young. But I'd never had a drug charge on me except for this smoking pot on the buffalo. So, I was pregnant. And, and they weren't going to, and I had a rip in my placenta, so they weren't going to let me do any jail time. Uh, so they let me stay out of jail while I was pregnant. And so, mind you, when I had cadence, I ran with my children. Uh, we ran to a friend's house, and we stayed there, my three kids and I, Matt, for the next few, uh, maybe, uh, maybe a month or so. But I really wanted to go home. I missed home, so I decided to go home. I thought I'd been gone long enough. They wouldn't look for me. Well, they pulled up the very next day. And I was fixing breakfast for my children. I just really got done. And um, they knocked on the door. They know they knew me from Exxon. So they knew that um, who I was. All the cops in Camden knew me by Ashley Page. So I asked them, you want to stay for breakfast, please? Let me eat breakfast with my children, you know. Because I knew I was fixing to be gone for a minute. But I thought I wasn't going to be gone for that long. My income tax was fixing to come in. From the jobs I worked, Matt was going to use my income tax money to get me out of jail. Well, they did stay. They took me to jail. I did my jail time there. I ended up doing six months in that jail um, because Matt used my income tax money with some to take a girl to a, uh, a Slipknot concert. So I was stuck in jail. My children ended up going into to custody, but only custody of family members. So, um, I did jail time there, got transferred to another jail. While I was in that jail, I ended up, the officer, I hope I didn't miss the part. 
say when I was working in Exxon, I think I said that. I've done this a few times because the test, I mean, the, the last testimony I tried to do on this was like over an hour. Um, and I don't think a lot of y'all want me to ramble on for an hour. Um, well, if I didn't say it, I had already stole a bunch of money from Exxon and this officer took me in. Um, this was, this was before all this happened with the jail, with the pot, smoking pot. This was when Matt and I just had Toby. I ended up stealing a bunch of money from Exxon um, and, and uh, going to jail. No, I never went to jail for it. I never got in trouble for it. But the officer, that, that, the detective that was involved in it, that let me go, he was the one that showed up at this jail at this time that I, that I was in um, for smoke pot on Buffalo. He showed up with all this evidence of the $38,000 or somebody else's checks that I had done, um, stole. Now, please forgive me if I have uh, missed something. Um, I'm trying to remember in these uh, uh, thing, bits and pieces. Um, one of these days, I'm going to write this down for real. So, I did my time while I'm in there. I get transferred from there. I did nine months of time there. I got transferred from there to another jail. And I did six months in the other jail while they got all my paperwork and stuff taken care of um, and, and uh, while I got convicted of the $38,000 worth of somebody else's checks. It just went on for a very long time. And the person that was involved in me stealing their checks was a very um, known and wealthy person. So, uh, of course, they it drug on a very long time. Well, I ended up getting probation and getting out. I stayed with um, ex-foster parents of mine with my children, and Matt just went haywire. He decided he didn't want to have nothing to do with his children or my, any, anything. So we go and stay at his house. Now, while I'm living at these ex-foster parents' houses, I'm stealing from them. I even stole, you know, some money at the job that I was working at. It was given to me. Um, I, I stole some money, you know. I've been stealing. I burned every bridge around by stealing from them. Nobody trusted me around. Nobody. <laughs> Matt and I, um, I ended up going and staying at Matt's house. Please forgive my dog chewing on the bone. I can't hear very well. I ended up staying um, with Matt and my children and his new girlfriend just so he could see his children. And I was definitely trying to get him back. Well, during this, um, his lady tried to say that I tried to poison her with Xanaxes. And um, they gave us all a drug test right on the spot. And both Matt and I passed the drug test and she did fail it for Xanaxes. So uh, that was a bad moment for everybody. They believed her. Um, couldn't believe it. I went off on Matt right then. Like he knew me. He'd known me since we were in high school. How in the world could he believe this woman? But it is what it is. He was with me for 10 years. He knew me as a mom. How could he think this? Well, that was the beginning of the losing my children to foster care. So I um, ended up in Big Sandy, Tennessee, trying to you know, figure out what's going on. I've done law, burn every bridge I was in. You know, I couldn't go back to the ex foster parents' houses I was in. Excuse me. And so, I've just had moments, you know, and, and I started doing meth. Um, I decided to just forget the whole mom thing. They weren't going to let me have my children. As soon as my children got into foster care system, they are into the system, it was over. Uh, I had already been in 17 foster homes in four years. I had already d done the foster care thing. I knew what would happen if my children got involved in it. And so here was the start of it. But praise Jesus, they allowed them to be in homes that were family members. So it wasn't like they were being, you know, taken out of homes that they didn't know any, taken to homes they didn't know, know anything about. 
when I started doing math, I went off the deep end. Um, I ended up just going nuts. I ended up getting down to like 98 pounds. Um, I fell in love with methamphetamine. I ran, um, I quit going to probation and stuff. Um, so I'm, I'm supposed to be going to probation for this $38,000 for somebody else's checks. And instead, I'm not. I'm blowing it off, blowing it off. I'm out doing my drugs. I'm working at a bar. You know, all this good stuff. Just sarcastic. It was not good. But it taught me who, it, it made me who I am today, you know, and definitely. Um, so, the thieving, all right, I don't want to get into the mental institutions, you know, because that goes, that, that's a whole other subject through my life, these mental institutions, but, mm. so, I'm running from the law for these five months, I'm living out on the side of the riverbank, living in an aluminum boat, living with a tree, uh, tree cutter that, that had a methamphetamine issue. Um, but he owned his own business, cutting down trees, so he let me live there, and I would take care of him and his boys, um, cooking and cleaning and whatnot. It was never, ever another way around. I never really had to do that, um, but, you know, that, that's another subject. So, um, I finally got caught one day. I got caught. I went into town with a friend that was driving on suspended license. A revoked license actually and uh, we got pulled over uh, I gave them a false name um, they had found um, some pills I was trying to sell to somebody else in my bag and the cop had them in his hand <laughs> and I remember him asking me with them open in his hand what are these and it was three hydrocodone and I took his hand and I flipped his hand over into my hand and I swallowed them things it was over they didn't have me on that one but they did find a roach um, but, point is, um, I went to jail. I did a little bit of time in Paris, Tennessee. They didn't let me go. They made me straight to Paris, from Paris to um, Benton County, where my charges were for the $38,000 worth of somebody else's checks. While I'm in there, they decide to tell me, serve me papers saying that they're trying to take my children away from me completely, saying that I'm mentally incapable something clicked y'all something clicked i went freaking nuts um while i'm in there and uh i went to my first mental institution while i'm in um there i mean i went nuts as in the fact of uh i started screaming um hollering i would just get these rages um i, I would see things i would hear voices like it was it was getting crazy um and I think it was because I was coming off the meth. Now that I look back on it, I 100% I believe it was because the meth was coming out of my system. But that that's another day for another story. Another testimony, part of the test, my testimony. So, um, they, they sent me to the first mental institution that evening. Um, I go into the mental institution. And they put me on this Aldol. They look at my parent, my mom's history and my, mem my mom's history and they put me on Haldol and they send me back to jail. I go in jail and, and um, I'm taking this medicine for a few days, you know, the med cart comes in and uh, all of a sudden I'm starting to see people being slashed, killed in this cell with me with this maybe eight girls, five girls, I mean, five to eight girls in this cell with me and they're being killed all around me and I'm just like freaking out. So they take me out of that room, and they, um, no, there was a girl in there, a big Amazon woman. I remember her saying, you need Jesus. And I just remember cussing her out like a sailor. Just couldn't believe she was even talking to me like this. How dare you? You know, look what you do. Look who you are. Now, I, I couldn't be more thankful for that, that one voice. That one voice reminds me of Jesus. Just like that one woman that come running out there about to whoop my tail. And said I was blessed. She reminded me of Jesus. She reminded me. These short little people, these these little people in these little moments of my life, they reminded me that Jesus, you know, she was there. 
So they uh, take me to my next mental institution or the next time, the second time to the mental institution, Bolivar. And I go the second time, and this time they put me on lithium instead of Haldol, and I'm in there a little longer. I'm in there over the Thanksgiving holiday, and, and it's just, it's bad. While I'm on this Haldol, they take me to court to, for my children, and they, you know, I'm in the courtroom. It's only just us and I, uh, us and Matt, and, and, and uh, I'm on the knees, on my knees. I'm begging the uh, judge who knows me very well, please do not split my children up, please. And Matt, you know, I didn't forgive him for the longest time, but now I see if I had never done it, Toby would be so much more messed up than I think that he is today. But that's my oldest son, Matt's non-biological child. But Matt got up on the stand and said he didn't want all three of them. He just wanted his two, and that was fine. And I was so mad, but it made me, it clicked, clicked some more. They took me back into jail. And, and I, I started refusing to take this medicine. I started going flipping crazy. I mean, it was nothing for the, the people at the med cart to come up there and try to give me my medicine. And I'd just slap it out of their hands. I'd scream at them. People in the, in the cell couldn't speak to me. I would just scream at them. Nobody could talk to me. I'd cuss them. Oh, so mad. And um, I was so hurt. And I was also being told I was flicking, flipping schizophrenic and bipolar and my whole life I was told I was gonna be bipolar just like my mama and I knew I wasn't gonna be bipolar and I'm here today to tell you they lied to me just like they lied to everybody else telling them that they got all these mental issues these, these chemical imbalances it ain't no imbalance your father didn't create human error I'm telling you it's unclean spirits I know it I've been there, I've done that, and these medications they give you, this sorcery, it go, it just helps that unclean spirit to live in you just a little bit longer. These antipsychotics and, and nerve pills and opiates and oh, sleeping pills, trazodones, and you, you, oh, it, it, it's all lies. It's all lies, my friend. Lies. Your government has lied to you. Okay, so. While I'm in there, alright, they take my children. I go nuts. Um, they put me in a cell by myself. I'm taking my flip-flop. I'm banging on the wall and door. All of a sudden, I think I got a child in there. I think that I have a child, that I've had a child, and this child just went missing in this little bitty cell that I'm in. So I take I take a bleach. They've given, you know, they give you in the mornings to clean up your, your cells and stuff. And they gave me a mop and um, the bleach rag to pour down the hole. There was a hole that was in there and pour bleach in it to make it quit stinking, you know. And um, instead of pouring it in there, I drank it. So they take me to the mental institution the third time. And um, this time, you know, I, I'm refusing the medicine at the mental institution. They don't know what to do with me. All I needed was somebody to talk to. All I needed, and all I needed is them to look at my records and see that it was the drugs that were causing me to have these these psycho thoughts and, and noises, voices, hearing voices. So, I've refused to take medicine. They sent me back to jail. Don't know what to do with me any longer. But by this time, the Haldol's done worked out of my system and stuff. So whatever the medications were doing to cause me, or the lithium, whichever one they put me on the second time, they're working out of my system. And I decide to, uh, um, or not I, they send me straight from there to prison. Um, I did, like, I did a long time, several months in county jail, and then they sent me from there to prison. Now mind you, when I got in there, I've been on methamphetamine, so I was like 98 pounds. When I got, when I went into prison, I did a, I did, I was a little over a year in prison. And I, when I got out of prison, I was 209 pounds. I gained a lot of weight while I was in prison. It's all about your food. I'm telling you, it's all about your food. It's your food intake. Uh, even with the thyroid problem, it's your food intake. I'm telling you. And please look it up yourself. Please do your own research. Okay. So... In jail, I got a huge reality check, a wake-up call, telling me, you don't need to be on this path anymore. You were not a thief. You're not a liar. You, you, you're 
Stop. You have children. You're not an addict. Stop. Well, I did my jail time. I've only had three people in my life to really give me a chance. And, and I've only stole from one of them. And when the day that I stole from them, I stole their medicine out of their, they sent me to go get their medicine from the pharmacy. I steal their pain medicine out of their bag. They're laying up in bed. It's my granny. She's laying up in bed with a hole in the side of her, for MRSA. And she sits and she opens her medicine in front of me and counts her, she pours her pills out of her bed, counts her pills, and then hands them back to me and wouldn't even take them. Because I had taken her medicine. I had taken her pills. So, that person, um, mind you, I never stole from her again. I never would steal from Granny again. And I never stole from Aunt Mouse, the one that was with me and done. Is she, she was there when I got out of prison. She bought all of my clothes from the Goodwill because I gained so much. She picked me up, you know. But it didn't stop me from stealing, y'all. And, and Opie. Opie is the last line. When Opie met me, I... I was completely uh, out of it. I, I wasn't a mom anymore. That's all I knew for years was how to be a mom at home with my children, uh, cooking and cleaning three meals a day, taking care of my children. Yeah, I had a thieving problem, but I wasn't on any drugs, smoking pot here and there, but I wasn't really even doing that then. I was really just taking care of my children. And all of a sudden, I got none of it. So I'm on the deep end again, you know, I'm on the deep end. I'm starting to do drugs, I'm shooting up morphine, I'm shooting up pain pills now. I'm living in dumps and I'm shooting up pain pills. And it just got really bad. It got really bad. And Opie meets me. By this time when Opie meets me, I am selling myself for money. Um, to be able to get my drugs, not for the drugs. I wouldn't take anybody, I, I always had my certain dealers that I went to, but I was selling, I, I would just take showers with naked men, you know, and wash them, and, and I'd get money for that. I'd just give them companionship, talk to them. I never really, you know, did the whole uh, sexual thing. Um, Opie and I met one night and, and I swore up and down after Matt that I would never be with anybody else. I'd never love anybody else. I was, it was just over for me in, in love. And, and I was very choosy about who I was with. And then Opie comes into my life, and that was it. Um, and this man did not like a liar, and he didn't like a thief. And those were two things that I was the most. And, and he had an addiction problem at that on opiates. Um, pain pills, uh, um, cocaine, uh, psychedelics. He had some issues, uh, and I as well. I'd never done psychedelics, but the time I met Opie, that's when I did. With the thieving, okay. Um, when he met me, I was carrying around little bottles in my backpack, um, and I'd go into people's bathrooms and stuff, and I'd steal their shampoo and whatnot other conditioner, I'd steal bars of soap, um, razors, I'd steal socks, undies, um, shirts, um, so I, I was taking stuff, and Opie and I went, he worked out of town, he was a plumber, and he worked out of town, and we had, his boss got us a motel, or a hotel, and I switched the pillows, and the maid come running out, she said, you'll switch pillow, you'll switch pillow, she was on the second floor, and we were packing our truck up to go, and, and he said, what's she saying? I said, nothing, nothing, nothing. And we're trying to get him in the truck, you know, before he realizes what she's talking about. And he goes, is she saying you switched pillows? So he starts grabbing our pillows and looking, and he realizes that I had switched our pillows. And man, this look on his face, this distraught, this disappointed look, it just made me cry. I couldn't believe that the, the, the shame, this heavy shame, it felt just like when Granny did what she did. It was just this, how dare me? He said, babe, if you need a pillow, man, we will go to get five pillows if you need them. He said, we, you don't need this pillow, why? He said, I can't be with a thief, you know, like, this is not acceptable, you know? 
and, and, and he's like, well, we'll just talk about this later. Just go give this woman this pillow back and get ours and let's go. You know, and he, I mean, his boss got us this, this place and everything. You know, I done done this, this, this thieving. That was it, y'all. That was it. I started praying more over these hands. I was following Jesus at this time. I was following Jesus. He still loved me. He long suffered with me. He had mercy upon me. He had compassion upon me. Jesus never left me. Even when I was still taking things that didn't belong to me. Jesus still loved me. Because right before Opie and I really got together is when the Bible came into my life. Right before. And then more and more of the word of Yahuwah God Almighty every day help me to not with these hands do good with these hands instead of evil with these hands. My hands have been taught since my youth to steal and take what didn't belong to me. And I was 27 when I stopped. And it's not easy. It was not. It's easy now. But it wasn't then. It was not easy. Now the lying part, I would only lie. I would never really lie. I want to answer questions, but I wouldn't answer the questions the way they wanted me to answer the question. I would take the question and t turn it just a little bit. Um, but if somebody asked me directly, did you take this, I would straight up tell them. But I lied several times, many, 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 many times. With these hands. When Jesus started helping me to flip these pages and write Bible verses all over everything. Write them. Write Bible verses all over everything. Write them. Write these Bible verses. Write them all over everything. It taught my hands to stop doing evil just because I was using it to write his verses to write his scripture so that's another reason why i know for sure that it is very important for us to read and write what it is that the lord jesus is talking to us about write his scriptures down write his words down speak these words out loud with your own tongue with your hands turning these pages every day your hands lifted up and praying every day. If you have ever had a thieving problem or if you are a thief right now, you can be delivered. You are not once a thief, always a thief. Jesus Christ can remove this from you. Hallelujah. I promise you. I promise you. Jesus can remove any sin anyone has ever done. These infiltrations saying once a thief always a thief once an addict always an addict once an alcoholic always an alcoholic once a liar always a liar they are lies <laughs> you can't be forgiven these hands do not have to steal any longer <laughs> if you have ones in your life that are just turning away from you constantly and they're telling you you know you're always going to do this and I can't have you in my house. Please don't be angry with them. No one accepts that it's because of the things that you've done. But please remember that just because you are doing things that are not of Jesus does not mean that he's not talking to you. Does not mean that you don't have to get in the word and read does not mean that he's going to forsake you. Man and woman don't have long suffering and mercy and compassion like our creator, the Lord Jesus, Jesus, the knower of all hearts. We don't have, have that understanding to have compassion upon a person that continues to do the same insane thing. Some of them 
are not doing it insanely. They know that there's not going to be a different result that comes from it. The definition of insanity is doing the same thing and getting a different result. And never getting a different result. Thinking you're going to, but you don't. No. The, the, the ones that know that they're doing sin within them, even when they don't want to do it, these are the ones that, that know that they... These are the ones that Jesus knows you are not doing it just because you want to. That you truly want to stop. You truly do not want to do these sins that your hands have been doing. I love reading in Psalms because he teaches us, he teaches us, David does, how to pray with our soul, like to our soul. How to pray for our hands, how to pray for our lips, how to pray for our ears. You know, like the, these body parts have to be prayed for just as well as the body of the Messiah. And we have to long suffer with one another. You can be forgiven. You're not what's an addict, always an addict. You're not once a liar, always an addict, liar. You're not once a thief, always a thief. Just having people in my life letting go and allow, and, and forgiving me for the sins that I, that I had done against them helped me through my lifetime realize that there are good people in the, in the world, that Jesus really does love me. He kept ones in my life that never gave up on me because they have faith. And if you don't have that person that, 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 that has faith in you, that has faith that Jesus can change you, then know that your Lord Jesus is long-suffering with you. He knows. Don't forget. Don't forget that not one person on this earth, man or woman, is a non-sinner. We all sin. We live in the, on this earth right now. We live in this world surrounding us. There's going to be sin. But we just, we turn away from one another so quickly. We turn away because, oh, they're a thief. We shouldn't be seen with them. Oh, they're a liar. We shouldn't be seen with them. <sighs> Not fair. It's not fair. I've just been thinking a lot about this, but I thank y'all so much um, for listening to my testimony. You know, Jesus woke me up to Ecclesiastes. He said, if you've cursed at somebody, remember. Or if somebody curses at you, remember that you've cursed at somebody before. I've done a lot of sins in my life. I do sin all the time. And for Jesus to still show me his ministries. It's truly amazing. It's a miracle in my eyes. And I know that if Yeshua HaMashiach can change me. And I know that he can change any person that is on this planet <laughs> that does not want to steal through these hands, but wants Jesus to heal or remove possession from someone else's body through their hands. <laughs> Y'all have a blessed day.